The U.S. Mint has already told us they're out of 10th ounce eagles. My guess is we won't see any new ones until 2025. We've been doing some really big orders lately. Seriously, some very big orders. And people have an affinity for silver eagles. We're already buying, you know, uh, allocations into October. At what point does the U.S. Mint say we're out of silver eagles until the end of the year? It's coming. It's going to be very close. And if I had to guess, and we're beginning to see that already, junk silver is becoming hard to get again. Silver Eagles are becoming hard to get again. And so the 10th ounce Eagles are gone. And at what point does it become a realization to the masses that they need gold and silver by then? My guess, you will see product be, be very difficult to get. Premiums will pop up in a, in a very material way. And I've been begging people for almost a year. Well, I go back to November 2023 when all when the premiums started to drop and the availability was great. That coincided really with, you know, this AI uh, um, craze and and the the you know massive increase in in Nvidia and even in Apple and in Bitcoin and all of this stuff that distracted people away from precious metals. In today's news recap, Bank of America expects declining silver inventories to make the deficits count. The Silver Institute shows that the silver market has been in a deficit for the last five years. And during that time, we've seen substantial decreases in global inventories which makes sense as uh, the metal has to come from somewhere to meet the shortfall. Yet with no resolution to the gap in sight, as the deficits are widely expected to continue years into the future, a recent Bank of America report suggests that the declining inventories are starting to make the deficits count. Their report also commented on China's surging silver consumption, which has continued to grow in 2024 as their solar production has again exceeded expectations. And with governments calling for a tripling of green energy by 2030, the demand for silver is going to have to increase if the governments are going to get anywhere even close to meeting their targets. China has already shifted to being a net importer of silver. And we've personally talked with one of the larger silver producers who told us about how Chinese smelters have been going directly to Latin American silver producers and offering substantial Financially reduced treatment charges because they're able to take advantage of the increased premiums in China. Now we'll show you more clips of the latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Metric where the government gets to cherry pick what items go into this basket that they're that they're weighing, and it's it's completely and totally nonsensical and and. All along, they're talking about reaching this arbitrary 2% inflation rate, which, again, I've never quite understood because, you know, why not have it negative 2%, which lower the, the rate, the higher the standard of living. But they're 60% away from reaching their rate of, of 2%, and they're pivoting and moving the other direction and reigniting the inflation engine. And if you save in dollars, as Rick Rule says, you're going you're gonna to be a victim, period. And so that what these countries have chosen to do is to accumulate assets. It goes back to what Zoltan Pozar was saying, and he's right. This is a system of, of who has the commodities will make the rules ultimately. So that that is what we're seeing. And you look at a country like Saudi Arabia, who's trying to play both sides of the aisle, at least for now, and not upset the West to the degree that we really probably should be if we knew what their ultimate motivations were. You can see it if, you, if you're paying attention. But uh, yeah, this is, look, the fact that they got caught importing massive amounts of gold isn't the issue. The bigger issue to me is that there's a lot that they're not getting caught on. And these countries are realizing that holding money in dollars or wealth in dollars is a game that is coming to an end. And you can see that by them lowering the, the front end of the curve and the back end, the rates go higher just by a little bit. But that's the rest of the world saying that nah, we choose to hold assets differently than than, you know, any duration um debt instrument by a, a broken and, and insolvent country. So I think the same thing should be true for, for everyone, that that it's you look at the wealthy people and they're not holding dollars, they're holding assets. And that's that's what we're seeing on a, on a much larger scale here. Look at all the countries that are intending to join. Look at Turkey, look at Poland. You know, these are countries that are massively accumulating assets and, and yet they're Western friendly countries. Look at a country like Turkey, who has applied to BRICS, the first NATO country to do so. They've been the largest buyer of gold for the last year. 
so or right up there. So these countries understand the the, the place that that we are at. The the problem here is that most people in this country don't, and they're going to get run over by this. Um, and I don't know what you and I can do. We've tried our best to sound the alarm. Either you see this for what it is, or you don't. And and the crazy thing is, is that I truly believe that the history uh, uh, that will be written about in or or the the story that will be written about in, in textbooks and history books, um, we're right there right now. Over the next two months, it will determine which path we go down. Um, and I don't think either administration is going to be able to right the ship economically, but can at least mitigate the path that we are heading down with this current administration. And you can see by the, the maneuvering of all of these countries and, and how they're trying to, to get rid of dollars quickly and accumulate assets and even do so very privately, just how relevant this really is. And the scariest part about it all, on top of everything, including the, the erosion in our in our First Amendment rights across the Western world, um, where you have to think twice about the things you say and how you say it and the way you say it, um, is that most people just don't have a clue what is coming down the pike at us. And I don't think it's ever been more concerning. And when you see a country like like um, India and a country like Saudi Arabia, Western allies that are doing all they can to distance themselves politely and quietly and privately from the West, it should be a big eye-opening um, admission. And yet our media will not tell anyone what is happening? They're more concerned about fomenting this this nonsense between you know the two candidates and and this divisiveness that we're seeing instead of uniting us into into a common uh, you know a, a common strategy. And you know that's why I do what I do, and I know that's why you do what you do. But I think we are going to get into a period of time here in the next few weeks where it becomes abundantly clear uh, just how important this really is. Uh, it goes from hiding what you're doing to outright in your face and doing it. And if the current administration retains office and you see Kamala win and you get guys like John Paulson, massive, huge hedge fund guys say, I'm done, I'm pulling up, I'm selling 2.9 billion worth of assets. How fast does that change the narrative and what does that look like? So these are important times. And I think if, as Rick says, you're not a contrarian, you're damn well uh, bound to be a victim. And it's becoming obvious that that is the path we're on. In today's news recap, silver price soars above $31 after Fed's bumper rate cut decision. Silver delivers a sharp rally above the crucial resistance of $31. The white metal strengthens as the U.S. dollar surrenders its early gains and declines. The U.S. dollar weakens as the dust settles after the Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision, in which the central bank announced its first ever interest rate cut in more than four years. Historically, lower interest rates by the Fed bode well for non-yielding assets, such as silver, as they reduce the opportunity cost of holding an investment in them. The U.S. dollar index, which tracks the greenback's value against six major currencies, falls following the Fed 50 basis points interest rate cut. The Fed was widely anticipated to cut interest rates, but traders were divided over potential rate cut size. A bumper interest rate cut by the Fed gives a clear indication that price pressures are on track to return to the bank's target of 2%. For the interest rate guidance, policymakers see the federal fund rate heading to 4.4% by year end, which suggests that there will be at least more decline in interest rates. On the contrary, the CME FedWatch tool shows that the central bank will cut 75 basis points in the remaining monetary policies this year. Silver price strengthens as it has delivered a breakout of the downward sloping trend line plotted from May 20th high of $32.50. The asset is expected to extend its upside towards the previous high. Upward sloping 20-day exponential moving average also suggests that the near-term outlook is upbeat. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and check our description for full vid credits. Enjoy the episode. Nothing but a head fake. It's the little boy who cries wolf. And one of these days, the wolf cometh. And that's the point. And and it just appears as though, in many respects, the wolf is already here. Now, is this the one where it just keeps on running? 
Uh, is it is it possible that we see 2,600, 2,700, 2,800? How about 3,000? Um, you take the commercial bank suppression out of the markets and the price of gold and silver will be massively higher. And the worst part about a long-term macro cycle, which we have been in, is, is that most people aren't capable of processing the fact that this could actually happen here. That recency bias, that normalcy bias will be the worst thing for people to hang on to. And uh, you have to take a step back and look at what the most well-informed traders in the world are doing. And that is the fact that they are selling treasuries, pushing up the yield on the back end of the of the curve. They are accumulating commodities. They are distancing themselves from, from the West. They are, are formulating alliances and bonds and and either you believe it for what it is or, or you don't. And, and you know, you talk about the BRICS. Yes, it's a slow moving process. Um, but I've read just recently that now they're talking about bringing in all of these other groups from Asia, bringing in the Eurasian Economic Union, bringing in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, bringing all these groups into the fold slowly and methodically. But you're beginning to hear more and more and more about bringing all these countries into the fold which are representing the majority of human population. And, and this is something that isn't going away, yet you don't hear word one about it in, in here in the West. And so um, all of these things that you're saying make so much sense to me. Everything that you've just said makes so much sense to me and to the people listening. And it makes it that much harder for us to want to help our families and, and to see their reaction. Um, we've got to the point now where I think it's, you you know, you can only save the world, you know, one per started with one person starting at a time with yourself, your immediate family, um, the noble endeavor of trying to help everyone. I think at this point, if you don't see it, you probably won't um, until it's already here upon you. But yeah, I, I think this is right now, right here where we are almost to the month of October. Look, in the month of October, you have this massive meeting in in with the BRICS, only then followed by the election. And, and things are going to start to get very interesting and be very difficult for people to ignore. And, and I guess people are just, they're just, they don't believe that gold and silver can continue to go higher. My belief is that gold and silver should be massively higher already, but for the actions of the six, seven, eight commercial banks that have done their best to maintain a Western illusion that is breaking. And it's breaking because our allies that have helped us support that illusion are breaking ranks and, and moving in a different direction. And India is a prime example, as is Saudi Arabia. And they're, they're so concerned about the way that we look at this, or the way that the West looks at it, that they're trying to do it in a private manner. The same thing is true about China when they told us that they weren't buying any more gold. Baloney, the import-export numbers show that they've been buying gold. And as we talked about, through their proxy banks, through the through the, the commercial banks that are able to buy from the refineries in South Africa and, and in Switzerland that aren't reporting it to the IMF because it's not coming from the central bank and all sorts of other avenues on top of being the largest producer of gold in the world and the second largest producer of silver and then flying all around the world buying up Dore Bar and Concentrate so that it doesn't come off of an exchange. All of these things put together shows you the, the tremendous effort that these countries are putting into de-dollarizing without stepping on the foot of the king um, until they have enough, enough uh, of a mass behind them where the king isn't as relevant as as he once was. So, yeah, I think we're getting there. And I, I keep saying this, that it's going to be crazy a few weeks leading up to the election. It just seems that we're already there. And uh, I guess we'll be able to watch it shotgun here real time over the next uh, eight weeks to see how it unfolds. But I think $2,600 gold is cheap. I think we'll be north of twenty seven or 2800 by the end of the year, maybe 3000 Who knows? But silver at 31 bucks an ounce is still the bargain of a lifetime. And, you know, when you see a country like India doing what they're continually importing huge amounts of it, it ought to tell you just how important it is. And everything we've talked about with China going around the world buying unrefined silver so that it isn't noticed should tell you where it ultimately will be. You don't need to see it in front of your face at 50 bucks an ounce to wake up. You should just see not only is it continuing to move higher, it's all it's doing so with its arms tied behind its back. Uh, one of these days, it's going to be set free. If these commercial banks are indeed covering the way that it appears in the last commitment of traders report without enticing the managed money to sell, then it's a whole new game. And you will see silver go bang just like that. 
And it seems like we're almost there. So you pull those commercial banks out, realizing that this is a game they can't keep fighting. Yeah, it, it's going to be uh, a it's going to be a, a a market that I think will be unlike any other that I've ever been part of in in almost forty years of being in finance. And back to our roots. Uh- what do you think of Andy Schechtman's take? Will the East versus West war end up in a massive gold and silver price squeeze? Will the dollar collapse in 2025 as the BRICS nations take over? Share your honest opinion in the comments section down below. Send a super thanks if you find our recaps valuable and make sure you see this video right here because it's a perfect fit for you. I see you on the other side.